The topic of today is really watching the S&P 500, uh, both on the daily and the intraday. And uh, that's something that I do each and every day before I start trading. Before I start trading, the first thing I would do before I look for picks is get into the mood and understand a little bit about uh, what's happening in the market and uh, not just the S&P 500, but actually several other world indices. So I'm starting by looking at uh, several market indices like worldwide. Uh, it could be the DAX in Germany, the, uh, the CAC, the Hang Seng, whatever. And I'm trying to figure out where we are, where we're going, just to get into the mood of the market. I normally do it approximately anywhere between uh, 60 minutes to 30 minutes before the trading session opens. It does not take me more than 15 minutes or so to prepare my day. And a small part of it, really just a small part, is understanding the markets, trying to figure out where we're coming and where we're going. And it's extremely important to understand that in order to understand what is about to happen during the trading session. So if you take a look at the S&P 500, um, and, and, and that would be, of course, today. OK, so I'm looking at the S&P 500 and I'm trying to figure out where we are and what we're doing. So here's the daily of the S&P 500. And what are we seeing here? Uh, we're seeing uh, the recent big breakdown uh, at this support level. And actually, I could continue this line here and then you can see that uh, we had the uh, resistance here and then the support. And of course, it's an area of resistance and an area of support. And then we've seen the next support level that came right over here. And at that point, we, uh, we bounced again. And now we're trying to uh, decide where we're going next. So right now, as you can see, we are building some kind of a bear flag formation. We do not, market does not look good. And again, I'm, I'm talking about this not because I'm trying to uh, explain to you where the market is going, is because I'm trying to understand what the mood is going to be, where, in my opinion, the market should move during this day. So I'm thinking about the world indices, and the world indices are looking, let's say, red. And then I'm looking at the S&P 500, and the S&P 500 just broke down from the highs passed through uh, one very support level, bounced through a second uh, very support level, and now is going sideways. So we've seen the market trying to move higher several times, a few, a few times during the past few days. Uh, started with a big bounce up, started with a big gap, and then crash, and then a bounce to the highs. The second day, we were going sideways, a little bit down. Third day started up, coming down. So again, when you look at what's happening right now in the market, the general idea is that the market is likely to continue coming down. We're holding near the lows, we're building a bear flag. And what I need you to do before you start trading each and every day is to take a look at the S&P 500 and try and figure out where we're going today. So you need to come with a plan to the trading session and try and realize what is likely to happen. And then once you have the general idea of what is likely to happen, you need to take a look at the intraday and then we will move right now to the intraday and start figuring out um, what is likely to happen and how do you manage the direction of the market and the direction of the stocks that you are about to trade. So the first look is always the daily. Now, if you want to understand a little bit more, I, I have it. I mean, I don't have to look at it every day because I already know what's happening. But you could definitely move, for example, to the weekly chart. And then I'll go to, I don't know, five years. And then I'll take a look at uh, a larger perspective of the recent five years. And I would ask myself, OK, where are we really now? Now, looking back at this period, as you can see, the market came down. OK, we are at uh, 2018 here. The market came down and you take a look at what happened recently and you compare it to 18. And you're saying, well, you know what? We bounced off that low and continue to move higher. So maybe that's not such a big deal. Okay, and then you take a look at what happened at uh, 
the COVID start, of course, 20. And uh, then we definitely bounced and moved to new highs. And we are skyrocketing, really. And now we take a look at uh, the way the market, where the market is. And well, maybe it's not just not going to be a huge crash. Crash, maybe it's just a pullback from the highs. We were very extended to the upside. It's likely that we will have a big pullback. Okay, so you put everything, and again, I'm not, I'm not trying to discuss here if the market is going to continue to move lower or not. I'm just saying you need to take a perspective of everything that happened. This I would usually do once a week, you know, just to understand where we are. And then I would uh, normally, every day, I would take a look at the daily and I will try and figure out uh, what's going on daily-wise, where we are, where are support levels, are we touching a support level right now, and what I expect uh, that will continue. So if, if, if the market would close somewhere around here, I would definitely take a look at the market and I would say, uh, well, tell you what, tomorrow, Friday, things are not looking good. So if I'm going to see the same thing as I'm seeing here, if I'm going to see that, Tomorrow, I will probably say, well, we're kind of building a bear flag here. I don't feel good about the market. And again, if you take a look at what happened yesterday, we started up, came down. Today, we started up, came down. And, uh, you know, the S&P is down now 0.6%. But if I remember correctly, we were up 1.3% or something like that today. So that's a big pullback from the highs, a big move down. Now let's take a look at uh, the intraday in five minute candles. You always take a look at the market at five minute candles. You don't look at the S&P 500 in anything else other than five minute candles. The reason for that is because institutional traders are only watching five minute candles. Institutional traders are the ones who are important. They are the ones who are um, moving the markets. They are 80% of the volume of the market. Therefore, they are the ones that will decide whether the market is going to go up or down. Well, it has been a little bit different recently, especially when the market was driven up by a lot of people who, uh, you know, were, you know, buyers, COVID time, people who stayed at home and felt like they need to buy and used all of these uh, free commission platforms uh, to buy and hold stocks. And they felt like whatever they're getting from Uncle Sam as a COVID payment or whatever, staying at home, they need to spend it somehow. And there was a lot of people who bought stocks and the market kept going up. Now, you don't hear these people anymore during the last few weeks. Um, you don't hear the stories, the, 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 the stories of the people who are buying stocks, holding them or telling their friends, you got to buy this stock, you got to buy that stock. The, the, the formal factor, the fear of missing out factor is no longer there. The control is now returning. Uh, it, it was never away from them, but it's returning more and more to the institutional traders. And right now the market is driven by professionals, really. So once you take a look at the market behavior, you can immediately see that it is being led by professionals. Like everything is coming back to kind of normal. For example, the way we move intraday. And now that I have the understanding, looking at the daily of the S&P 500, I have the basic understanding that I've, I, I've feel like the market is at the lows, likely to continue moving lower, try to move higher several times, failed. And then I would ask myself, okay, would, would, would this be something that will happen today? And let's just take a look at the last uh, uh, several days here, okay? Uh, I'll start, well, it's a little bit hard because we have this uh, big tail, but look at the markets over here. We started low, moved higher, and then finished over here. The next day, we opened up with a gap, tried to move higher, failed, tried to move higher, failed. That was tomorrow, Ye yesterday, sorry. And then we kind of crashed down, closed the gap. Today is the same. We started with the gap up. Why would you think it would look this, it would look differently? Well, maybe you have a reason to think, and, and, and we don't really know what's about to happen, but once the market was moving out, up, Looking at everything, at the perspective of the S&P 500, 
you need to realize that, well, you should be suspicious. You should not accept it as it is. I kept saying today when we were trading, I kept saying today, okay, the market's moving higher, but any pullback, I would suspect. It does not look right to me that the market's moving higher and now comes a pullback. Is this just a small pullback from the highs, which will, I'm talking about what happened here, for example, is this just a small pullback from the highs that will take us to a new high? Normally, I would say yes. When the market is uptrending, if I would look weeks back, I would say yes, it's more likely for it to, to continue. And then I, I, I did mention today that I would give it up to 70% chance, anywhere between 60 to 70% chance that we will move to a new low. Now, why was I th why was I thinking this way? You know, when 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 the market starts with a big gap up, normally there will be some kind of a down pressure, but it normally doesn't come after a big upside move. Normally, the down pressure at the beginning, then there is some kind of a down pressure. The gap will not close, and we had a gap of I think one percent in the S and P, one point three percent in the Nasdaq, something like that. And anyway, you would have some kind of a of some kind of of, of selling power, talk, profit taking, whatever, in an up market, of course, that will drive the stock market down a little bit, and then you would reverse and you would have a gap and go. But again, if you look at the where the market's coming from, you need to change this perspective that you have about what is normally happen, happening during the intraday to something which is a little bit different. That's why the market is so complicated. It's not just a rule, okay, we have a gap up, and now that we have a gap up, yeah, we started with a gap up, and now we're going to have a gap and go in the S&P 500, the S&P is going to continue higher. No, that is not the case. The case is different. The case is that we are, again, if you look at the daily of the S&P 500, looking bad and it's likely that we will continue moving lower. Therefore, any pullback, I will suspect and I will think that, you know what, maybe we just saw the highs, small pullback, normally will take us to a new high, not in this case, I will probably look for shorts this time. And we started looking for shorts. RBLX was the stock that we traded at this time. Uh, I don't remember which one the S. There was one long, long in Microsoft that failed, of course, because the market was coming down. RBLX worked fine, compensated for, RBL, for, for, for Microsoft. I did finish my day very nicely in green. But anyway, what we've seen here is the market starting with a gap up, moving up, then coming down under the lows, now the trend is kind of established. Now I believe that what I said earlier, that we probably have up to 70% chance that we will move lower, I am probably right. And then comes another pullback, and then a big move down. Now everything needs to also be considered within the technical, the parameters of the, tech, the intraday technical analysis. Not just the intraday, the daily, but also the, the intraday. First, the daily. We know that we have support at this level. So you're looking at the point where the market came down, the, the, the lowest point today, and you can see that it started yesterday and the day before. So we do have support. But you know what? Before we look at uh, the end game, maybe it's not the end game, we still have... Uh, like what uh, 30 minutes or so 27 minutes to the trading session so everything could could change but let's start and look at the beginning of the trading session today so again the market is moving up but i do not trust it and then i need to ask myself okay where should it stop moving up and again everything comes back to technical analysis so you you take a look at you take a look at the technical analysis and you notice First, of, first, you need to look at yesterday's volume. Yesterday's volume, yesterday's uh, actually not volume, the, 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 the vast majority of the volume or the uh, price action happened between these two lines. So take a look at these two lines. Now, here it's somewhere in the middle of the range and here we were going sideways. So we had some kind of um, resistance in this area. And therefore, once we get to that point, again, it's an area, it's not exact technical point, it's an area. Once we get to this area, 
we can definitely think that, well, we, we may be in trouble here because we had a lot of price activity in this area yesterday. Now, what do I mean by price activity? There were buyers, <coughs> excuse me, and there were sellers. And most of the buying and the sellers and the selling happened between these two lines yesterday. Now, if there's a lot of buyers, most of the volume, uh, it, it does not need to be most of the volume. There was a lot of volume uh, between these lines. It does not mean it, it, it's, it's, it's not the most of the volume. It was, there was a lot of volume between these lines. So there were volume. What does volume mean? There were buyers and there were sellers. For every buyer, there was a seller. For every seller, there was a buyer. Now, whoever they are, and I don't know who they are, let's talk a little bit about the buyers. Because who really does create the resistance? Why did we stop over here? And again, I'm getting into the basics of technical analysis. And, and now you need to see that the way everything comes in together. Everything comes in together. And again, we start at the daily thinking that, oh, the market does not look good. We try to move higher several times. The day before, this day, we failed. Uh, today, now is a new day. What should I expect? Okay, yesterday, we had a lot of resistance this day. And again, what is resistance? Buyers. Why? Because I would call them disappointed buyers. The buyers that bought here yesterday, they were hoping that the S&P will pull back up. Again, if I take a look at uh, the daily of the S&P 500, here's the daily of the S&P 500 again. Uh, we looked, uh, these are the lines that uh, I just draw. Uh, I just drawn on the on, on on the chart, so you can see that we came down very strong. I promise you, at this point, there are a lot of people who are buying. Why? Because in their opinion, the market is very extended to the downside. Therefore, in their opinion, the market should pull back up. There's a lot of bottom fishers fishing fishing going on. There's a lot of people who are catching falling knives. They believe that the market should stop somewhere around here and move to a new high. Why? Because they're looking back at what happened. And you know what? Let's go back again two years or maybe more than two years. Let's do it three years. Let's do more than three years. Five years. Okay, hold on a second. Now, so they're looking back at the last five years or so and they're saying any pullback which I bought during the last several years, actually more than five years, any pullback, I won. Now, that's exactly the problem because they're believing that this pullback would will also uh, reach a new high or, or, or at least take them to green territory somewhere here and they could have some profit. Well, maybe they're right. The, the, this is exactly why I'm not a long-term investor. I'm not a long-term investor because I know that they could be right several times, but when the big time comes, when the big drop comes, they will give up on everything they gained during the last five years or more. So whatever they made, whatever profit they make during the last few years, if at some point the market would stop where it's stopping right here now, and I don't know if it's going to continue down. I believe it will, but I don't know. If the market will crash down from here, they're gone. They're out of the game. They will give back to the market whatever they gained in the last few years and more. Why? Because they will keep adding. They're just they're adding right now. Maybe if we're going to come down another 5%, they will keep adding. And once the market reach, I don't know, uh, a 50% pullback from the highs, whatever it's going to be, then at that point, they will lose whatever they had and much more. So although these people are buying right now, the market is holding to this level. Let's go back to the intraday. And again, everything could change. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do look at the daily and the intraday and I'm trying to figure out what is likely to happen. The reason I need to know what is likely to happen because I need to choose direction. If I'm going to go long or I'm going to go short, um, if I'm going to choose uh, the right stock to short again at, at the right entry point, the right time based on the market and so on. So I'm looking at uh, what happened uh, yesterday and I see a lot of price action right in between these lines over here. Now, this price action means a lot of people who are buying. The buyers 
I would call them the disappointed buyers, are the ones that expected the market to move higher. However, the market crashed down. There was a big crash yesterday after that. So everyone who's buying here finished the day thinking that, uh, oh my God, I just lost a lot of money. And what should I do? Well, they will not sell at the lows because investors, long-term investors, they're not used to selling at the lows. They're used to waiting a uh, long time time until uh, maybe the market will move back up. They don't like to sell at a loss. Sometimes they succeed, sometimes they fail. At these times, they could fail. But what happened was quite nice from their point. Again, normally they will not sell once the market is crashing. Remember the disappointed buyers who bought here. So the market did reach the point where they were buying yesterday. This could be the point where they start selling, at least some of them. It is the point where they start selling. And again, it's a technical look at the market. It is the point where they start selling because that's the point where they bought yesterday. So the disappointed buyers from yesterday who failed yesterday, look at how much they failed. It spiked up at the Fed announcement. And then they thought, wow, it's going to continue higher. No, it crashed down. Try to move higher again. Crashed down once more. They are the ones who are selling at the price they bought yesterday. We don't need them all to sell. We just need a small number of them to sell to stop the stock from moving higher. And it was stopped. So again, you look at the daily, you look at the intraday, there's a reversal. Don't trust it to continue higher. Normally it should because it's a gap and go. No, you take a look at the daily and any pullback you suspect that's going to take us down to a new low. Another pullback, don't trust it to move over the highs. And then we come down to a new low. Now again, take a look at the technical behavior of the market. Again, you take a look here and you can see that at the point where actually the gap was closed right over here. But again, at around this area, there was another pullback, another support, because that was the point where the gap was closed. Again, very, very technical, very, very technical. And then we continued moving lower. What was the support now is resistance, and we are moving sideways. Now, everything is very technical. It's Again, it's not the first time the market moved up and failed. Take a look at what happened the day before. The market moved up and later failed try to move up again and fade. So although there are people who are buying, you need to remember again by looking at the S&P daily that the end game is likely to move the S&P down. We could be wrong, but so far it's working out. Every trade that you take during the day, you should consider before you take the trade, what is going to be the market direction? While the market was moving up today, we had some uh, nice trade. Uh, I'm looking at uh, some of my trades. We had BA, we had Netflix. Yes, and then we had some shorts. And we also had one loser, excellent X. I had one loser, excellent X. So two out of three trades, not bad. And anyway, the market was moving higher. And then, I mean, I go long with the market, but where should I take a partial? At the point of resistance, of course. And now the market's coming down. Should I close my trades earlier? Yes, I should close because I do not trust the market to continue moving higher. Normally, I will trust the market to move higher. I moved out of my long trades like Netflix and Boeing relatively early or reduced more size because I thought that it is uh, not likely or anyway, once the, the, the red candle started, I thought that it is more likely that the S&P will continue moving down. So yes, they did continue to move down. So I, I, I reduced the risk or I sold high expecting the market to fail. And again, it all started with the total idea. Where's the daily? Where's the interday? Where's the support? Where's the resistance? How far should we go? Is this pullback going to take us to a new high? Normally, you should start buying with, at pullbacks. No, it's likely to take us to a new low. Again, the daily, the way we came down, we closed the gap. And if you look uh, back, again, the market behaves the same way. It's quite the same as what happened 
the day before. You see, we started with a big gap up. You would expect a continuation. That was, of course, intraday news, but the news is a part of the game right now anyway. So again, what I'm trying to um, talk here about, what I'm trying to say here is that before you start your trading session, and if you have any questions, that's the time to ask, because I'm done talking about this. So, uh, or, if, or if you have any question about anything else. So what I'm trying to say here, before you start trading each and every day, you need to take a look at the technicals of the daily. Try and understand where does the market come from? What did other markets like? If we look at the international markets, what did they do? Did they move up? Did they come down? How did they finish today? Did they finish in green? Did they finish in red? Now you take a look at the S&P 500 and try to figure out where the market's going. What's about to happen? And uh, where's the support? Where's the resistance? You look at the intraday. Normally you should expect the gap and go, but then you look at the resistance at the highs of yesterday. Then you say, oh, well, you know what? We may have trouble here. And then the pullback starts. And then you, 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 you remember the daily. Each and every day, start with the daily, look at the intraday direction of the S&P 500. Of course, I did not mention yet, but Nasdaq, also important, not as the S&P 500, but definitely important. And then try and figure out what you should do at that point. Should you go long? Should you go short? Or if you are long, maybe reduce your size, maybe take your profits, maybe just, you know, move out of the trade earlier than you usually do. So that's, that's really how things are being built up before you start the trading session, during the trading session, and then going on to the next day. Now you start remembering, you, 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 I, I do want you to, to start the next trading day trying to remember what happened today, the day before. I mean, just take a look at what happened. Try to figure out it's more likely during the next days that the behavior would be the same if we start with the gap up. But what happens if we start tomorrow with the gap down? Um, I don't know. The, the way it looks to me right now, we're likely to start with the gap down. I'm already starting to plan my next day. It does look like we gave up. Maybe we're going to finish in green today. Look, it, it could be. We finished uh, here yesterday. Right now, S&P is in green. But if you look at uh, the whole price behavior today, that's not a positive sign. What happened today is definitely not a positive sign. We rejected the highs again. We came down. And even if we are going to finish in green today, you really know what happened during the day. And if you know what happened during the day, normally don't expect a gap up. Now, of course, I do not know how the market's going to continue, but I think there will be people who will start selling and selling stronger tomorrow because of this failure again. I just need to thank you for being here in this mentorship. Hope you enjoyed. Hope it helped. And of course, we'll meet tomorrow in the trading room. Thank you guys for participating. Enjoyed your company here. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye traders. Thank you for helping Clifton. Bye.